Disclaimer, this is my all-time favorite lens. This is the 85 1.2S by Nikon, one of the most anticipated lens among portrait photographers. I was waiting for Nikon to release this lens for so long. I've had it for quite some time. In this video, I'll be testing out this lens in different conditions. And uh, let's find out if it's worth the hype and the cost. First things first, you won't see the display on the lens like you see on some of the other S-series lenses. And actually, I'm quite happy about it. To be honest, I don't use the display very much in real life. Including the display would have increased the cost of this lens, which is already pretty high. I mean, after buying this lens, I'm somehow functioning without my kidneys. Jokes apart, this lens looks huge. I mean, look at the front element. It's a 82mm filter thread, but surprisingly, it's not very heavy. When you attach it to slightly heavier bodies like the Z9, it feels pretty balanced. When you shoot for the first time at 1.2, it's a bit overwhelming. Like, I have shot at 1.4, but 1.2 is quite new to me. Now the important question is, 1.4 versus 1.2, doesn't sound like much of a difference, right? So is it really worth to pay the extra price for 1.2? Well, we'll talk about that at the end of the video, but talking about the aperture difference, there is a difference. Well, let's say you're shooting at f6.3 and f5.6, maybe you won't notice much of a difference. But when you're going towards the wider end, let's say 1.8, 1.4 or 1.2, even a slight change in aperture, you will notice the difference. Now lenses usually are not that razor sharp when you shoot at the widest aperture. But that's not the case with this lens. Even at 1.2, the eyes are crisp, focusing is super quick and silent. The lens is using dual STM stepping motors for focusing. Now, I don't understand what that means exactly, but in short, the autofocus system works great. I hardly have missed focus on any of the shots till now. When I half press with the eye autofocus, I'm pretty confident that the subject's eye is going to be in focus. There was this one time where the subject was crossing the road and I took continuous shots and I did miss the focus by a bit. Apart from that, this lens pretty much nailed it every time. 85mm is a great focal length for portraits, one of the reasons being less distortion. It accurately represents the subject's appearance as it appears in real life. When you combine this focal length with the 1.2 aperture, the compression, the depth of field combined looks unreal. To be honest, this lens has made me fall in love with portrait photography. When I see these images on a bigger screen, there's something about it which feels different. I don't have words to describe it. But since I have to use words for this video, the only thing I can say is the results are beautiful. The colors are vibrant but natural, skin tones look great and the bokeh is just mamma mia. The lens has 11 rounded diaphragm opening. At 1.2, the bokeh is not exactly circular, it's a bit oval shaped. The minimum focusing distance on this one is 0.85 meters. You cannot get super close to the subject but you can capture closer portraits because of the slight telephoto focal length. When shooting in low light, you realize how much of a difference can 1.2 actually make. This is where the lens really shines. The aperture is so huge, it's not just the depth of field. The amount of light entering the camera compensates for the low light situation. Here I was just shooting with the available ambient light and I was still able to use faster shutter speeds without cranking up the ISO too much. Let's talk about shooting videos. When you're using autofocus, no issues. The autofocus is again very silent, which is particularly more important in videos as compared to photos. Because in videos, you might be capturing audio as well. The silent autofocus definitely helps. The focus ring is quite smooth. You can easily pull focus from one plane to the other 
and there is not much of focused breathing. So when you're changing your focus, you're not going to see a significant difference in the field of view. I used to use the 7200 a lot to capture those cinematic b-rolls where I want the bokeh look and high compression. But I think this is going to be my go-to lens for those cinematic shots. Don't get me wrong, this is not a replacement for the 7200. 7200 is a very versatile lens, but to be honest, after I got this lens, I have stopped using the 7200. I mean, if you buy a new lens, you anyways stop using your older lenses. Guilty of doing that. So yes, the lens is pretty expensive and it's not for everyone. If you're a professional photographer, you're into portrait, fashion or let's say wedding photography, you can think of this as a good long-term investment. When you compare this lens to the 85 1.4 F-mount, that's almost half the price of this lens. The 85 1.8 S for mirrorless cameras is almost one-fourth the price of this lens. So the final question is, is it really worth to spend the extra amount for just the 1.2? Don't doubt the 1.4 and 1.8 are better value for money. But the look that you get with the 1.2, you cannot replicate that with other lenses. Yes, you're paying a lot of money. Yes, it's very expensive, but you're getting one of the best lenses Nikon has ever made.